What's up, YouTube? This is the 82 and 0 podcast. This time we're taking a look at the legendary Scotty Pippen. He was born September 25th, 1965. He is born in Hamburg, Arkansas. And he's one of 11 kids. His mother was six feet tall and his father was six foot one. And all of their children were tall. Pippin was the tallest. His parents could not afford to send their other children to college. His father worked at a paper mill until suffering a stroke that paralyzed the right side of his body and prevented him from walking and affected his speech. Pippin attended Hamburg High School playing point guard and he led his team to the state playoff and earned an all-conference honors. So, Pippin, this will come up later in the video, was supposed to be the provider for his family. He was supposed to be the ticket out of there. And he began his college career at the University of Central Arkansas. He was discovered by the school's head basketball coach, Don Dreyer. And he was pretty much a walk-on. He didn't receive much media coverage, however, because Central Arkansas played the NAIA, while the media focused more on the prestigious NCAA. And at this time, Pippen stood at 6'1 when he graduated high school, but he would eventually grow to 6'8. As a senior, he would average 23.6 points per game, 10 rebounds, 4.3 assists, and nearly 60% from the field goal line. Now, having eyed Pippen before the 1987 draft, the Chicago Bulls orchestrated a trade with the Seattle Supersonics. A lot of people don't know this. Pippen was actually selected fifth by the Sonics, not the Bulls. And the Bulls traded in exchange for their eighth pick, Oladen Polonese, and a future draft round pick options. And he became part of that young core of Horace Grant, uh, Charles Oakley, and Michael Jordan. He made his debut November 7th, 1987, and he didn't make any... Significant impact right away. Uh, this team was definitely Michael Jordan's. So the 87-88 season, he only averaged 7.9 points per game. And this is when the Bulls would make it to seven games against the Detroit Pistons. And the thing is, they, despite their 50 wins, def despite their third best defense, they didn't get it done. And going into the 88-89 season, Pippen would take a leap. He'd put up 14 points per game, 6.1 rebounds, 3.5 assists, 1.9 steals. So you were starting to see glimpses of how good he was going to be as a player. And they would lose to the Detroit Pistons in the conference finals in six games. Now going into the 1990 season, the Bulls go 55 and 27. And this is when Pippen takes his next leap. He puts up 16 points per game, 6.7 rebounds, 5.4 assists, 2.6 steals, 1.2 blocks. And Pippen would get his first All-Star nod this year. So this is right around the time people were thinking the Bulls have arrived. And they go to seven games with the Detroit Pistons. And unfortunately, in that seventh game, Pippen had one of the worst games of his career. He would have horrible migraines, and he would just go one for ten from the field. Jordan was the only one who had good numbers on that game. And the next year, for the 90-91 season, this is when the Chicago Bulls broke through. They go 61-21, and 21, um, led by their great coach, Phil Jackson, and their executive, Jerry Krause. And this time, they sweep the Detroit Pistons in the conference finals. And Scottie Pippen puts up 17.8 points per game, 7.3 rebounds, 6.2 assists, 2.4 steals, 1.1 blocks on 50% shooting. And they go to the finals against the Los Angeles Lakers. And some people predicted this Lakers team to win because Magic's prior experience in the finals. But 
the Bulls beat them in five. Now in the 91-92 season, the Chicago Bulls would go 67-15. and This Some people consider this the Bull, best Bulls team. Uh, Scottie Pippen puts up 21.0 points per game, 7.7 assists, 7.0 rebounds, 1.9 steals, 1.1 blocks on an elite 50% shooting. And they would beat the Portland Trailblazers in six games. Going into the 93 season, they'd go 57-25. and 25. This would be the Th- Bulls' third straight championship. Pippen would put up 18 points, 7 assists, or I'm sorry, 7 rebounds, 6 assists, and 2 steals. Now, at this point, the Bulls are coming off of a three-peat, and Jordan would retire. And at this point, Pippen's a three-time All-Star, and... This became his team now because Jordan decided to go play baseball. And people didn't know how good this Bulls team was going to be without Jordan. So Pippen took that role very well. So the 93-94 season, their first year without Jordan, the Bulls still go 55-27. and And a lot of this is because of Phil Jackson's great coaching. But... Scottie Pippen puts up 22 points, 8 rebounds, and 5 assists with an elite 2.9 steals per game. And he was in the MVP conversation, and he probably should have won Defensive Player of the Year that year. And unfortunately, they don't win it because they lose to the New York Knicks in the semifinals in 7 games. Now, the 94-95 season, the Bulls would struggle, but Jordan would come back with just 17 games left in the season. And they would lose in the conference finals to the Orlando Magic. Now, going into the 95-96 season, the Bulls would acquire Dennis Rodman. So now they have arguably the greatest big three of all time. You got Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, and Dennis Rodman. And Pippen puts up 19.4 points per game, 6.4 rebounds, 5.9 assists, 1.7 steals. And this is when he started shooting the three more. He took five three-point attempts, going 37% from the field. Uh, the Bulls would go 72-10. and 10. They had the best defensive rate in the NBA. They would beat the Seattle Supersonics in the finals. And going into the 97 season... The Bulls would go 69-13. and 13. Pippen would put up 20 points per game, 6 rebounds, 5 assists, 1.9 steals, on 47% field goal shooting and 36% from 3. The 98 season, Pippen would have back injuries, and he'd only play 44 games, and the Bulls would beat the Utah Jazz in 6 games in the finals. And... This would be the last Bulls championship because you got to understand the tension that was going at this point with the owner, Jerry Krause. He felt he wasn't getting enough credit for building this Bulls team. So he decided he was going to prove he could still win without the core. So he pretty much shook up the team. He said he's not going to bring back coach Phil Jackson. So that's why Michael Jordan retired, because he didn't want to play for anybody except Phil Jackson. And Scottie Pippen would get traded to the Houston Rockets. And Rodman, I believe, went to the Lakers. So pretty much this whole team got thrown apart. But to make matters worse, that entire year, you know, not not in the offseason, but the entire actual 97-98 season, there were trade rumors about Scottie Pippen. He had a lot of tension with Jerry Krause, the executive. Because back in the early 90s, Scottie Pippen signed a really, and you can't really blame him at the time, he, he signed a very poor contract. Um, let me just explain what I mean. 
he was desperate to feed his family because, you know, he had a disabled father and 10 siblings to support. And he signed a long-term deal because he, he didn't know if tomorrow was promised. He wanted to get his money. But the thing was, he signed his contract in the early 90s before the, um, the rise in the salary cap and the NBA just exploded in popularity, so they were able to play pay, pay players better. So I'm going to give you like an example. In 91, he would make just $765,000. 92, he'd make $2 million. 93, $3 million. 94, $3 million. 95, $2 million. 96, $2 million. So... Let's go to the 97-98 Bulls roster, right? That last season he that last season he was there. To give you an example of how underpaid Pippen was, he would make 2,775,000. He was the sixth best he was the sixth highest paid player on that Bulls team, which is absolutely ridiculous because he's the, obviously the second best player on that team. And Jordan would make $33 million. So Jordan was making $31 million more than him. And you never really heard about this at the time that they had tension. You just heard that Pippen wanted to win. And he was the second best co-star to Michael Jordan. You know? And we never really heard about tensions between them. But, you know, in recent times, you've been hearing a lot more about Scotty Pippen feuding with Jordan. And I think a lot of this has to do with resentment now that Pippen's older that he didn't get paid what he was worth. And he probably resents Jordan for his massive contracts, but that's his fault. You know, he signed a poor contract. But like I said, he gets traded to Houston for the 98-99 season, hoping to win. And he's over there with Hakeem Olajuwon and Charles Barkley. But they lose in the first round. And he would then go to the Portland Trailblazers for the 99-2000 season. And this was one of their best teams of all time. They go 59-23. and 23. He has Rasheed Wallace on the team with him. Steve Smith. Damon Stoudemire. Arvita Sabonis. Jermaine O'Neal even. This was a really deep team. Steve Smith. And they almost defeated the Los Angeles Lakers in the conference finals. They lost in Game 7, 89-84. So potentially, they were just five points away from a championship. And everything went wrong for them at the end of that game. So, Pippen wanted to get his seventh ring. He wanted to win on his own. Now, 2000-2001... The Portland Trailblazers would go 50 and 32. They would lose to the Lakers in the first round. Uh, The 01 02 season, the Blazers would go 49 and 33. And same thing, lose to the Lakers in the first round. And by this time, Pippen was just a shell of himself. He only really, in my opinion, he only really had one good year in Portland, and that was his first year there. I'm not saying he put up a bunch of points, but he had a good all-around game when he was there. Six rebounds, five assists, 12 points. But his numbers would just fall off. And by the 2 3 season with Portland, he just put up 10 points per game. And he was just kind of there as a defensive presence. I mean, he was still playing good defense at this point. Uh, He would average 1.6 steals, and he was kind of, he kind of took this shooter role around this time. His shooting got a lot better, but they would lose to the Dallas Mavericks in seven games, and that would be his final year in Portland. Now, a lot of people think that was it, but he would sign a contract to play one more year with the Chicago Bulls. In the 03-04 season. And that'd be his final year at the age of 38. He only played 23 games. He only averaged 5.9 points. But that was it. That was the end of his career. And 
Scottie Pippen to me is the is the greatest second option of all time. I don't think here's my opinion. I don't think Kobe Bryant is really a second option because I think Shaq and Kobe were they weren't Batman and Robin. I think they were Superman and Batman. Whereas Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen were Batman and Robin. And Scottie Pippen, he could have probably realistically led a team on his own to a championship. Like, let's say he had went to the Sonics. I think there's a good possibility he could have won a ring there. You know, I'm not saying he'd get six, but he's just a great all-around player in his prime. He's probably the greatest perimeter defender of all time. He was a very selfless player. He had a good work ethic like Jordan. He was efficient. Uh, he was a great passer, great rebounder. And let's talk about his accolades. He's a seven-time All-Star. He has the 95 Steel Champion. He's a six-time NBA Champion, seven-time All-NBA, 10-time All-Defense, 94 All-Star Game MVP. And the thing is, is I think he was really gypped of ever winning a Defensive Player of the Year. I think he should have won it in 94, but he never won a Defensive Player of the Year. And I think he's the greatest player to never win Defensive Player of the Year. So let me know what you guys think about Scottie Pippen. He's one of my favorite players of all time. Uh, I don't think Jordan would have won any of his championships without Pippen. They completed each other. So let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching.